بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد <coughs> So Alhamdulillah uh, we reached uh, the fifth sitting uh, So we're here in the fifth sitting the fifth uh, uh, fast Alhamdulillah and today's topic the Sheikh goes through or will be going through um the virtues of reciting the quran and you'll be going through the different types inshallah so uh, we'll begin by uh, starting the chapter with allah ta'ala alhamdulillahi da'i ila babihi al muwaffiqi man sha'a li sawabihi an'ama bi inzali kitabihi yashtamilu ala muhkamin wa mutashabihi fa amma alladhina fi qulubihim zayghun فيتبعون ما تشابه منه واما الراسخون في العلم فيقولون امنا به احمده على الهدى وتيسير اسبابه واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له شهاده ارجو بها النجاه من عقابه واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اكمل الناس عملا في ذهابه وايابه صلى الله عليه وعلى صاحبه ابي بكر افضل اصحابه وعلى عمر الذي عز الله به الدين واستقامت الدنيا به وعلى عثمان شهيد داره محرابه وعلى علي المشهور بحل المشكل من العلوم وكشف نقابه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن كان اولى به وسلم تسليما so uh, just a rough translation of that is the sheikh says all praise belongs to allah the one who invites to his door the grant of success to whom he wills towards attaining his reward uh, he bestows his favor on us by revealing or he bestowed his favor upon us by revealing his book the quran that contains a clear and uh, that contains verses that are clear and there are some verses obviously in the quran as well that are not clear either um as for those who in their hearts is some crookedness they follow the unclear verses as for those who are firmly grounded in knowledge they say amanna bihi kullu min indi rabbina we uh, and this is from the ayah from the quran surah uh, uh, surah to ali imran verse 7 we believe in them all of it i e the clear and the unclear verses are from our lord and all of it is from our lord and we believe in it Then the Sheikh continues and he says I thank him for showing us the guidance and making its means accessible for us I further bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except Allah in truth he is alone without a partner a testimony through which I hope to attain salvation from his punishment I further bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and messenger the most complete individual the most complete individual <clears throat> in his actions May, may peace be upon him his best companion abu bakr upon umar uh, and also upon umar through whom allah azza wa jalla elevated this religion and through whom this world became upright upon uthman the martyr of his home and his niche upon ali who is famous for his knowledge of problem solving and clarification of ambiguous issues and upon his family all his companions and those who follow in their footsteps till the day of judgment so uh, then the sheikh continues and he he says he says ikhwani qala allah ta'ala inna alladhina yatluna kitab allah wa aqamu salata wa anfaqu mimma razaqnahum sirran wa alaniyatan yarjuna tijaratan lan tabur liwafiyahum ujurahum وَيَزِيدَهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ شَكُورٌ سورة فاتر um, 
verse 29 to 30. So if we just look at the translation of that, we'll see that verily those who recite the book of Allah establish the prayer and establish the prayer and spend out what we have provided them secretly and in open, hoping for a trade gain that will never perish, that Allah Azza wa Jal may complete their reward for them and increase them of his bounty. Verily he is oft forgiving and thankful i.e. he appreciates the deeds of his slaves. And that's from Surah Al-Fatir, verse 29 and 30, which you can refer to, inshallah, yourselves as well. Um, so then the Shaykh continues and he says, Tilawatu kitab illahi ala no'ayn, tilawatun hukmiyyatun wa hiya tasdiqu akhbarihi wa tanfidu ahkami bi fi'li awamirihi wa ashtinabi nuwahihi wa sayati al-kalam alayha fi majlis akhir Insha'Allah. وَنَوْ أُثَانِي تِلَاوَةٌ لَفْضِيَّةٌ وَهِيَ قِرَاءَتُهُ وَقَدْ جَاءَتِ النُّسُوسِ الْكَثِيرَةُ فِي فَضْلِهَا إِمَّا فِي جَمِيعِ الْقُرْآنِ وَإِمَّا فِي سُوَرٍ أَوْ آيَاتٍ مُعَيَّنَةٍ مِنْهُ فَفِي صَحِيحِ الْبُخَارِي عن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه وفي الصحيحين عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الماهر بالقرآن مع سفرة الكرام البررة والذي يقرأ القرآن ويتعتع فيه وهو عليه شاق له أجران والأجران أحدهما على التلاوة الثاني على مشقتها so then uh, the Shaykh uh, uh, starts the lesson and he says, he says that the recitation of the Quran or the book of Allah is of two types and we look at it from two points of view. The first one is that it's uh, what, what he says, hukmiya, and this is relating to the, the, the practical side of it, as in you carrying out the uh, the uh, commandments that Allah has commanded you with and staying away from the uh, prohibitions that Allah has prohibited you from uh, and believing in all the information that's contained within the Quran so that you act upon it basically essentially um, uh, from that point of view that you're, you are executing what Allah has uh, commanded you with and and you believe in all the information that's contained within it in the in the book of Allah the Quran the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the second type is the obvious one that we all know. Uh, and, and that is um, that when we're breaking it down in this kind of classification that we all know is Tilawatun Lafziyah, which is basically reciting the Quran, you know, word for word, you know, letter for letter, you're reading it. You're reading it. Um, and so then the Shaykh says, and he says that many um, texts, uh, there are many tes- uh, texts uh, regarding the virtue uh, of reading the Quran. Uh, as and he says, uh, for example, or he says, as, as for um, all of the Quran, uh, uh, with regards to reading all of the Quran, and also with specific surahs uh, as well that are from the Quran. So from that point of view. Uh, and then the Shaykh says, he quotes, he says from uh, that, uh, he quotes a narration of a, uh, uh, on the authority of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, which is from uh, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, and 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 he mentions uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi where he said, uh, "The best you, uh, the best of you, is who learns the Quran and teaches it. So learns the Quran and teaches it. The best of you is one who learns the Quran and teaches it. And also in the uh, in, in in the in the in the two Sahih, the uh, two Sahih books." which is Sayyid al-Bukhari and Sayyid al-Muslim, uh, on the authority of Aisha, Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, um, uh, and in this uh, hadith here, we will look at the translation of that, that the one who recites the Quran without any dif- difficulty, recites it skillfully, let's say, recites it with ease, without a problem, then he will be with the ambassador angels and the honorable and the obedient. While the one who recites the Quran with uh, difficulty, 
he will be given two rewards right and 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 he re- and he receives and this person he receives a, a double reward or two rewards and the first is because the first is for his recitation of reading the quran and the second is for his struggle so the one who kind of stutters through reading the quran struggling and stuttering through um will receive two rewards because of the second reward is because of the difficulty endured during reading the quran so let's continue so then the sheikh continues and he says um wa fi sahihain aidan an abi musa al ashari radiyallahu anhu um anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala mithlu al-mu'min alladhi mathlu al-mu'min alladhi yaqra al-qur'an mathlu at-rujjati rihuha tayyib wa ta'muha tayyib wa mathlu al-mu'min alladhi لا يقرا القران كمثل التمره لا ريح لها وطعمها حلو so then let's just break this down step by step because there's a lot of evidence is in this lesson today inshallah so we'll go step by step باذن الله so that hadith uh, is on the authority of Abu Musa al-Ashari radiyallahu anhu one of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the example of the believer is who recites the Quran is like a citron it's like a citrus fruit it, that's a type of citrus fruit Quran is like a citron its smell is good and its taste is good the example of a believer who does not recite the Quran is like a dry date it has no smell but its taste is good the example of the hypocrite who recites the Quran is like a scent fruit the smell is good but the taste is bad and the hypocrite who does not recite the quran is like a, a colocynth it has no smell and it tastes bitter so we get the idea uh, from there it is clear meaning alhamdulillah <clears throat> so let's continue then uh, the shaykh says wa fi sahih muslim an abi ubamah radiyallahu anhu anna an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam qala iqra' alquran fa innahu ya'ti yawm alqiyamah شفيعا لصاحبه او لاصحابه وفي صحيح مسلم ايضا عن عقبه بن عن عقبه بن عامر رضي الله عنه انه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال افلا يغدو احدكم الى المسجد فيتعلم او فيقرا ايتين ايتين من كتاب الله عز وجل خير له من ناقتين وثلاث خير له من ثلاث واربع خير له من اربع ومن ومن اعدادهن من الابل من الابل so then the sheikh mentions some more evidences so the next one is by uh, abu uh, on the authority of abu umama uh, رضي الله عنه that the messenger of allah uh, صلى الله عليه وسلم Uh, he said read the quran for very it will intercede for its reciters on the day of standing or on the day of uh, judgment right so on the day of judgment um it will be it will it will intercede for you it will intercede for you um and then also the sheikh mentions another hadith it is also narrated then by uh, uqba ibn amir radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said would one of you go to the masjid and learn a verse or two from the book of allah or recite them this is better for him than possessing two camels and reciting three verses is better than uh, better than having three camels and, and likewise reciting four verses is better than having four camels uh, and you and, and your reward is based on the reward or your reward is based on the number of verses that you recite or recited uh, that's uh, uh, collected in muslim So then let's continue. Then the Shaykh continues and he says Wa fi sahih Muslim aidan an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala Ma ijtama'a qawmun fi baytin min buyutillah yatluna kitab Allah wa yatadarasunahu baynahum illa nazalat alayhim as-sakinatu wa wa ghashiyatuhum ar-rahmatu wa haffathum al-mala'ikatu وذكرهم الله في من عنده وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم 
تاهد القرآن فوالذي نفسي بيده له وأشد تفلتا من الإبل في أقلها متفق عليه وقال لا يقل أحدكم نسي لا يقول أحدكم نس نس نسيت آية كيت وكيت بل هو نسيا نسيا رواه مسلم وذلك أن قوله نسيت قد يشعر بعدم المبالاة بما حفظ من القرآن حتى نسيا So then the Shaykh continues and he mentions a, a hadith from uh, on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu um, where he said read the Quran uh, constantly um, or make it a habit read the Quran constantly for verily I swear by him in whose hand is my soul it is um, you will it will slip away from you so the meaning is that it will slip away from you faster than uh, uh, the camel from its loop you know where the camel's being tied you know it'll slip faster from you meaning that you know if you don't recite the Quran Quran often you ju- you're going to lose it you lose it and then the Prophet Sallallahu also said um, he said one of you should not say I forgot such and such a verse rather he, he was made to forget it and then the Shaykh says it's because he goes that is because um, a statement that if a statement said I forgot it, it, it indicates that that he's negligent with the book of Allah that he's not really taking care with regards to um, memorizing the Quran, understanding it, and, and and the likes of that. So then the Shaykh continues, and um, he says what, uh, and then he continues and he says وَعَنْ عبد وعن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قرأ حرفا من كتاب الله فله به حسنة والحسنة بأشر أمثالها لا أقول ألف لا ميم حرف ولكن ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف رواه التدمدي. so uh, then the sheikh uh, says that uh, he quotes um, uh, um, uh, a hadith on the authority of uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu where he said the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa said that uh, whoever reads uh, a letter from uh, the book of Allah for him, so for him when he reads that letter is a reward and that reward it, it's, it, it can be multiplied in tens right? it gets in tens and then um, so, and he says, and, and then the Prophet says, he said, I don't say that Alif, Lam, Meem is a, is a, is a letter or a one letter or word. He says, rather, as I say, Alif is a letter and Lam is a letter and Meem is a letter. Meaning that if you, when you say Alif, Lam, Meem, you get 30 rewards and, and, and more than that. If you understand the, the hadith from then, that's the uh, that's the mention uh, from or the narration is taken from a Tirmidhi. So then the Sheikh um, continues, and um, he says, "Wa anhu radiyallahu anhu aydan anhu qala." So also from uh, regarding uh, the narration of uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Masood, uh, he also said, "Inna hada al Qur'ana." مأدبة الله فقابلوا مأدبته ما استطعتم إن هذا القرآن حبل الله المتين والنور المبين وشفاء النافع اسمة لمن تمسك به ونجاة لمن لمن اتبع لمن اتبعه لا يزيغ فيستعتب ولا ولا يعوج فيقوم ولا تنقضي عجائبه ولا يخلق ولا يخلق من كثرة الترداد أطلوه فإن الله يأجركم على تلاوة كل حرف أشر حسنات أما إني لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف ولكن ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف رواه الحاكم 
So um, let's uh, read that as well. So th- th- that's with a similar meaning. So um, the the Sheikh says it is also narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, indeed this Quran uh, is like a feast or like a banquet. It's a banquet of Allah. Therefore, welcome that banquet to the best of your ability. This Quran is the firm rope of Allah, the clear light. The beneficial cure, it is a protection for whoever holds fast to it and it, uh, and, and a salvation for whoever uh, follows it. There is no deviation in it, so as to be blamed. There is no crookedness in it that needs to be straightened out. Its miracles remain forever and frequent repetition of its verses does not create boredom. Recite it for verily Allah will reward you for reciting it. With each letter you have ten rewards. I do not intend that. Alif, and I, I don't say uh, same with the other hadith. I don't say that Alif, La, Mim is a single letter. Rather, I say Alif is a letter, L- uh, Lam is a letter, Mim is a letter. Therefore, if we add up ten times three, we get thirty from that. Yeah, um, and so um, uh, we end. So the Sheikh ends there with that. And so um, it also there's a slight footnote. You're graded weak by Al Bani in the Ifa Targhib and uh, Daifa, but I think this has also been mentioned from the previous hadith which is Sahih because um, it just strengthens the meaning, it carries a similar meaning, yeah, so then uh, the Shaykh continues and he says he says, Ikhwani هذه فضائل قراءة القرآن وهذا أجره لمن احتسب الأجر من الله والردوان أجور كبيرة لأعمال يسيرة فالمغبون من فرط فيه والخاسر من فاته الربح حين لا يمكن تلافيه وهذه الفضائل شاملة لجميع القرآن وقد وردت السنة بفضائل سور معينة مخصصة فمن فمن تلك السور سورة الفاتحة ففي صحيح البخاري عن أبي سعيد بن المؤلة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال قال له لا أؤلمنك أعظم سورة في القرآن الحمد لله رب العالمين هي السبع المثاني والقرآن العظيم الذي أوتيته ومن أجل فضيلتها كانت قراءتها ركنا في الصلاة لا تصح الصلاة إلا بها قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب متفق عليه وأن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من سلى صلاة لم يقرأ فيها بفاتحة الكتاب فهي خداج يقولها ثلاثا فقيل لأبي هريرة إن, ت... إن نكون رواء الإمام فقال اقرأ بها في نفسك Al-Hadith Rawahu Muslim So that's a bit of a long one There's a, several uh, uh, evidences mentioned here as well So we'll leave them So the Sheikh says um, All my brothers These are the virtues and rewards of reciting the Quran For whoever seeks the reward uh, of Allah and his pleasure uh, And the easy deeds for big rewards So it's little effort But you're getting huge rewards in return You're getting big returns for little effort uh, Which none would let go really If we know this now We will who would leave that who would leave that reward except somebody who's a loser who would lose out and the loser is the one who is in need of a profit at a time when he cannot attain it so you know with another point here that you you've got to grasp the opportunity while you can you should you shouldn't say oh uh, i'll do it tomorrow or i'll do it next week or inshallah we'll sort it out no you should you know establish the reading of the quran you know as muslims we should be doing this anyway and then the Sheikh says, says, these virtues include all the chapters of the Qur'an. Obviously, the whole Qur'an, you know, is, is full of virtue, of course. Ha- however, he says, there are some narrations which mention specific virtues, uh, specific chapters of the Qur'an. For example, so one example is Surah Al-Fatiha, right? Surah Al-Fatiha, the first Surah of the Qur'an. Uh, and so there's a narration in Sahih Muslim, uh, Sahih Al-Bukhari, sorry, that we read in Arabic um, uh, on the authority of Abu Sa'id ibn Mu'alla, Anhu, that the Prophet وسلم, said, I will teach you the greatest chapter in the Quran. And then he said, All praise is due to Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. I.e., Surah Al Fatiha. 
and it is a seven and they say saba mathani saba al mathani meaning that it's a it's a it's the seven of repeated verses of the great quran that is given to me and given to the muslims obviously as well um so obviously we can take from there that we know that um that uh, it is uh, oft repeated why because we we you know we we uh, we we read the surah in every rak'a uh, from our prayers and outside of the azwar so uh, then the shaykh continues and he says he says due to this chapter's virtue uh, the virtue of Surah Al-Fatiha, it is considered as one of the pillars of the prayer. And we know that is a pillar from the prayers in it. So whoever like prays, whoever prays, so he's reading, let's say he's reading Fajr or Dhuhr or any of the Salawat, and he does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha, his prayer is nullified. That's the important thing to know. You have to read it. If you don't read Surah Al-Fatiha, well, you haven't prayed basically. You've done all the actions and everything. But you haven't you haven't completed your prayer, so that's an important thing to remember from a point of, from a fiqh point of view, from a fiqh point of view, that's important. So uh, then the sheikh says that um, uh, he, he mentions uh, uh, that particular uh, hadith, and he says there is no prayer for whoever did not recite al fatiha. That's collected by al Bukhari and Muslim, as uh, Brother Wasi mentioned uh, the other day, mutafaqun uh, alayhi. It means from Sayyid Bukhari and Muslim is agreed upon by the Muslim Ummah. Yeah. Um, then uh, the Sheikh says it is also narrated by Muslim from the narration of Abu Huraira anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam um, said um, that whoever prays without reciting Al-Fatiha, his prayer is incomplete. He repeated it three times. So it was said to Abu Huraira, what if we pray behind the Imam? He said, recite it to yourself. So recite it quietly, uh, quietly to yourself. So this is a question that a lot of people ask as well. And uh, it's important for us to know this. And this is clear now. And um, we're reading that uh, hadith, obviously in Arabic, for the brothers who in the group now who know Arabic, they know what I mean. And we read it in English as well. And it's very clear to understand what, what that means. So in the silent prayers, you know, for example, if the, uh, in the silent prayers you read it anyway, but in the, in the loud prayers where the imam is re- reciting, then it's clear what has been established here in the hadith that we should read it ourselves quietly. Don't just stand there listening. You should read it. Um, so uh, then let's continue. Then also, uh, and then um, the next part, so we'll continue reading this in Arabic, inshallah. So um, where, where are we here? So then the shaykh continues and he mentions a particular benefits specific to certain surahs as well now. So we're on this uh, topic at the moment. So he says, وَمِن, ومن سُورِ الْمُعَيِّنَ سُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ وَآلِ مْرَانِ قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِقْرَأُوا الزَّهْرَاوَيْنِ الْبَقَرَةُ وَآلِ مْرَانِ فَإِنَّهُمَا يَأْتِيَانِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كَأَنَّهُمَا غَمَامَتَانِ أو غَيَايَتَانِ أو كَأَنَّهُمَا فِرْقَانِ مِنْ تَيْرٍ صَوَافَ تُحَاجَّانِ عَنْ أَصْحَابِهِمَا إِقْرَأُوا uh, Surah Al Iqra رواه مسلم وذلك لأن فيها آية الكرسي وقد صح عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن من قرأها في ليلة لم يزل عليه من الله حافظ ولا 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 يقربه ولا يقربه شيطان حتى يصبح. So uh, let's just uh, read that bit uh, as we go along step by step. The Sheikh then mentions another hadith and he says. Read the Zahra Wain and the Zahra Wain are Al Bakra and Ali Imran. Al Bakra and Ali Imran, Surah Al Surah Al Bakra and Ali Imran, they're known as the Zahra Wain or Zahra Wan. For verily they will come on the day of judgment like two big clouds or two flocks of birds defending the one who used to recite them. Read Al Bakra for verily holding on to it, it is a blessing, and leaving it, it is a loss which the magicians cannot overcome. Meaning that 
you know, people who try to do magic on people or whatever, you know, in terms of magic and falling into this uh, kufr that people do, then this is a protection. By reading these, it's, it's a protection uh, from uh, uh, the magicians and their magic. And that hadith is collected by Muslim. It is also narrated by Muslim from the narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the devil does not enter the home in which Al-Baqarah is recited. That's also collected by Muslim. And then there's extra benefit. This is also because Ayatul Kursi is in Al-Baqarah and it is reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said whoever recites it at night will be in Allah's protection. The devil cannot approach him until he reaches the morning. Why? Because Allah will send uh, an angel that will protect him, right? Or protect that person who read Surah Al-Baqarah. So let's continue. Um, and then uh, the Shaykh mentions وَعَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَّاسْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنَّ جِبْرِيلَ قَالَ وَهُوَ إِنْدِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هَذَا بَابٌ قَدْ فُتِحَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا فُتِحَا قَدْتُ قَالَ فَانْزِلْ مِنْهُ مَلَكٌ فَنَزِلَ مِنْهُ مَلَكٌ فَأَتَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَالْ أَبْشِرْ بِنُورَيْنْ قَدْ أُوتِيتُهُمَا أُوتِيتَهُمَا لَمْ يُؤْتِ لَمْ يُؤْتَهُمَا أَوْ لَمْ لَمْ يُؤْتَهُمَا نَبِيٌّ قَبْلَكَ فَاتِحَةُ الْكِتَابِ وَخَوَاتِيمُ سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ لَنْ تَقْرَأَ بِحَرْفٍ مِنْهُمَا إِلَّا أُوتِيتَهُ رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ so then um, the Sheikh mentions another uh, narration. He says it is also narrated by Ibn Abbas that uh, the angel Jibreel uh, السلام, said while he was with the Prophet ﷺ, he said this is a door that is open from the sky and it has never been opened. Um, it has never been opened. He said then an angel descended from the door and came to the Prophet ﷺ and said rejoice with the two lights that are given to you that were not given to the prophets before you. The opening chapter and the last verses of Al-Baqarah. You will not recite a letter from them except that you are given it. Yeah. So, um, so uh, the opening chapter, i.e., Surah Al-Fatiha, and the last verses of Al-Baqarah. Uh, that's quite clear for all of us. Alhamdulillah. So let's continue reading. So the Shaykh continues and he says, uh, um, "Just give us a second, one second, brothers." <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, then the Sheikh um, says, Minasur al Muayyinati fil Fadilati Kulhu Allahu Ahad. In Surah Al Ikhlas. But in Sahih al Bukhari and Abi Sa'id al Khudri, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala fiha, Walla di nafsi biyadihi innaha innaha ta'dulu thuluth al Quran, or ta'dulu thuluth al Quran. Walaysa ma'na. كونها تعدل في في الفضيلة أنها تجزي أنه لذلك لو قرأها في الصلاة ثلاث مرات لم تجزي لم تجزئه عن الفات عن الفاتحة ولا يلزم من قونه أي شيء معادلا لغيره في الفضيلة أن يجزى أنه ففي الصحيحين عن أبي أيوب الأنصاري رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قال من قال لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك وله الحمد أشر مرات كان كما نعتق أربعة أنفس من ولد إسماعيل من ولد إسماعيل وما ذلك فلو كان عليه أربع رقاب كفارة فقال هذا الذكر لم يج لم لم يجزئه عن هذه الرقاب وإن كان يعادلها في الفضيلة. so then uh, the sheikh mentions actually a really good benefit here. so um, let's go through that. and he says in Al Bukhari, Sahih Al Bukhari, on the authority of Abi Sa'id Al Khudri, he reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, about uh, the chapter uh, about Surah Al Ikhlas. By, he said, by one in whose hand is my soul, indeed it is equal to a third of the Qur'an. So reading, uh, uh, reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas is equivalent to reciting uh, uh, a third of the Qur'an. But in virtue, in the virtue and reward that you get. Yeah. 
not in actually if you read it if you just read that three times it's as if you read the whole Quran no it doesn't mean exactly that it means in virtue so then the Sheikh explains it in more detail for us here so he says um, uh, he says uh, the fact that it equals a third of the Quran in virtue does not mean that it replaces it for this reason if a person were to recite this chapter three times in the prayer it, it doesn't replace uh, Al-Fatiha for example because that's from the Quran isn't it or any other surah in, uh, uh, for that matter uh, it says the fact that something is equal to another thing in the world does not necessitate that, he, that it replaces itself in its essence itself um, and so then the Sheikh mentions he says uh, and so in Al-Bukhari um, um, and Muslim on the authority of Abu, uh, Abu, uh, Abu Ayyub uh, Abu Ayyub Al-Ansari radiallahu anhu he reports that the Prophet ﷺ reported that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, ﷺ said, whoever says there is no deity that deserves to be worshipped in truth but Allah alone, without any partners, to him belongs the dominion, to him belongs the praise. Ten times, it is as if he freed four souls from the children of Ismail. Um, um, and in, an, in another re- uh, narration reported by Tabarani, it states it will be for him like ten freed slaves from the children of Ismail. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Al-Tabarani in his book called Al-Kabir. Um, and he says, and with that, if a person had to free four people as an expiation for a particular sin, and then he said this aforementioned invocation, it would not replace the obligation for him to free these slaves. Although freeing these slaves and the aforementioned supplication are equal in reward. So uh, uh, the Sheikhs explained it here uh, pretty well. Uh, uh, here is clear that we're talking about in terms of its reward. Yeah, in terms of the reward, uh, uh, not anything else. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, um, he mentioned some other examples as well now. So he says, وَمِنْ السُورِ الْمُوَيِّنَ فِي الْفَدِيلَةِ فِي الْفَدِيلَةِ سُورَةَ الْمُعَوِّذَتَيْنِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ وَقُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ فعن أقبة بن عامر رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ألم ترى ألم ترى آيات أنزلت الليلة لم يرى مثلهن قل أعوذ برب الفلق وقل أعوذ برب الناس رواه مسلم وللنساء أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أمر أقبة أن يقرأ يقرأ بهما ثم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما سأل سائل ما سأل سائل بمثلهما ولا ولاستع ولاستعاذة مستعير بمثلهما. <coughs> so let's just continue finishing this paragraph or part of it and then I'll read the translation. إن شاء الله. فاجتهدوا إخواني في كثرة قراءة القرآن المبارك. So I'll just stop there for a second. So then um, in another uh, uh, and then other examples as well is the Muawwidatan. Or the Muawwidatain, and whenever Al Al Muawwidatain is mentioned, they refer to the last two uh, chapters of the Quran, Surah Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas. Yeah. So the Sheikh says other examples of the specified chapters which have distinct virtues are Al Falaq and An Nas. The proof of this is the narration of Uqba ibn Amir, radiAllahu anhu. He reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Have you not seen the verses that are revealed tonight? The likes of them were never seen. Al-Falaq and An-Nas, collected by Muslim. And in the narration of An-Nasai, it says that the Prophet ﷺ commanded Uqba anhu, to recite them and then said, no one can ask with their likes or seek refuge with their likes. And uh, Shaykh uh, Al-Albani, rahimahullah, graded it to be uh, Hassan Sahih in his book called Sahih An-Nasai. So then the Shaykh continues, so let's just read the Arabic for where he left off and then we'll carry on, uh, we'll translate inshallah. So then he says, فَاجْتَاهِدُوا إِخْوَانِي فِي كَثْرَةِ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ الْمُبَارَكِ لَا سِيِّمَا فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ فِيهِ فَإِنَّ لِكَثْرَةِ الْقِرَاءَةِ فِيهِ مز... فِيهِ مِزْيَةً خَاسَةً كَانَ جِبْرِيلُ يُعَارِدُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ فِي رَمَضَانَ كُلَّ سَنَةٍ كُلَّ سَنَةٍ مَر عَامُ الَّذِي تُوَفِّي فِيهِ يَعْرَضُهُ مَرَّتَيْنِ تَأْكِيدًا وَتَثْبِيتًا وَكَانَ صَلَفُ الصَّالِحُ رضي الله عنهم يكثرون من تلاوة القرآن في رمضان في الصلاة وغيرها كان الزهري رحمه الله إذا دخل رمضان يقول إنما هو تلاوة القرآن وإتعام الطعام 
وكان مالك رحمه الله إذا دخل رمضان وترك قراءة الحديث ومجالس العلم وأقبل على قراءة القرآن من المصحف وكان قتادة, وكان قتادة رحمه الله يختم القرآن في كل سبع ليال دائما وفي رمضان في كل ثلاث وفي العشر, وفي العشر الأخير منه في كل ليلة وكان إبراهيم نخ وكان وكان إبراهيم النخائي رحمه الله يختم القرآن في رمضان في كل ثلاث ليال وفي العشر الأواخر في كل ليلتين وكان الأسود رحمه الله يقرأ القرآن كله في ليلتين في جميع الشهر. You want to stay for this and listen to uh, the translation for this for the for you brothers uh, of you who do not know Arabic because uh, this is going to amaze you inshallah. So then the Sheikh says. Therefore, strive hard, O oh my brothers, in the recitation of the Blessed Qur'an, especially in this month in which the Qur'an was revealed, I Ramadan. Reciting the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan has a special virtue. Jibreel السلام, used to review the Qur'an with the Prophet وسلم, one time every year. But in the year in which the Prophet وسلم, died, Jibreel came and reviewed the entire Qur'an with him twice in order to stabilize the Qur'an in his heart and make it firm in his heart. The pious predecessors used to recite the Qur'an frequently during the month of Ramadan, in and outside the prayer. As Zuhri, so, th- so these are some of the scholars in the, from the past, right? Uh, from, the, from our pious predecessors. Now look how they were. This is an example for us. As Zuhri, rahimahullah, used to say, whenever Ramadan arrived, he would say, this month is a month of reciting the Qur'an and feeding the poor. Reported by Ibn Abdul Bar, Ibn Abdul Bar, in at uh, in at Tahmid with a weak chain. So we'll go through it. Um, likewise, Malik, uh, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, may Allah mercy on him, used to leave off the books of Hadith and the circles of knowledge and turn to the recitation of the Quran. Likewise, it just mentions here some footnotes. Likewise, this is not authentically reported from Al Imam Malik himself. Qatada. Also, another scholar, Qatada used, uh, rahimahullah, used to complete the book of Allah every seven nights. And in Ramadan, he would complete the whole Quran every three nights. So check that out. He used to complete the book of Allah every seven nights. That's, that was just general for him, every seven nights. But in Ramadan, he would complete the whole Quran every three nights. And in the last 10 days of Ramadan, he used to complete the whole Quran every single night. It, also, Ibrahim al nakhai used to complete the entire Quran every three days in the month of Ramadan and in the last ten days of Ramadan he would complete it every two nights and finally and Al-Aswad used to recite the entire Quran every two nights throughout the year regardless of Ramadan or outside of Ramadan so then the uh, uh, Sheikh uh, continues finally we finish now we've only got two paragraphs so stay with me inshallah um, so then the Sheikh says, says فَاقْتَدُوا رحم, رَحْمَكُمُ اللَّهِ فِي هَاُلَىٰ الْأَخْيَارِ وَاتَّبَعُوا تَرِيقَهُمْ تُلْحِقُوا بِالْبَرَرَةِ الْأَطْحَارِ وَاغْتَنِمُوا سَاعَاتِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ بِمَا يُقَرِّبُكُمْ إِلَى الْعَزِيزِ الْغَفَّارِ فَإِنَّ الْأَمَارَ تُطَوَّأْ سَرِيعًا وَالْأَوْقَاتَ تَمْضِي جَمِيعًا وَكَأَنَّهَا سَاعَةٌ مِنْ نَهَارٌ So then the Sheikh says, says, therefore, he says, he says, my brothers, he says, he says, take these people, these pious predecessors, these righteous ones that came before us as an example to follow as role models, following their footsteps, because if you do so, you will join with the obedient and purified ones, you know, the righteous ones. And you'll take, and he says, take advantage of the day and the night hours. So the, the hours of the day and the hours of the night, take advantage of them, which will bring you closer to your Lord, Azza wa Jal, the oft forgiven. He goes, our lives, and this is important, because we all know this, our lives quickly come to an end and time flies like the period of an hour of a day. So, you know, time, it goes, you know, you don't realize where the days, the weeks, the months, the years go, fly by. And so it's important to remind ourselves to take benefit 
and follow in the footsteps of the people who came before us. Of course, there's a noble example in them, as the Sheikh has described to us today. And then he says, and he finishes off the lesson with um, with a dua, as his uh, custom is in this book. Um, in uh, was during these lessons, he says, "Allahumma rzuqna tilawata kitabika ala al-wajh al-ladi yardika anna wahdina bihi subul al-salam wa akhrijna bihi min al-zulumat il-nuri wa jalhu hujatan lana la alayna ya Rabb al-alamin." اللهم ارفع لنا به الدرجات وانقذنا به من الدركات وكفر عنا به السيئات واغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولجميع المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. سيدنا الشيخ سيد سيد um, he finishes off uh, uh, with a dua. So we'll just read the translation of that. Oh Allah, help us to recite your book in a manner that pleases you and guide us to the safe path with your book and take us from the darkness of blasphemy to the light of um, Islam with your book. Let it be a proof for us and not against us. So let it be a proof for us but and not against us. O oh Lord of the worlds, O oh Allah, raise our ranks with it. Save us from lowliness, expiate our sins with it and forgive us and our parents and the rest of the Muslims with your mercy, for verily you are the most merciful. May Allah shower his mercy on our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his family and his family members and all his companions. Uh, Ameen. So uh, we conclude the lesson, alhamdulillah, and inshallah I will see you tomorrow uh, around the same time to continue this book. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilant. Astaghfiruka wa tubulik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.